the speed triple again. Today we've got the long-term review of the speed triple. Had it for about a year now, so we'll do some long-term pros and cons and like who I think this bike is for and things like that. See you again in a second. had the bike about a year and uh, it's been a really good year with the bike excellent so I've got about five pros and three cons for you over the long term that I've noticed and the cons are more like just things that would change a little bit it's actually not a huge not huge things I've got some cons in other videos too I talked about but these are gonna be different so that's a big bump right there man all right pro number one I think this is an excellent all-around package of a motorcycle from, you know, well, here, like the cornering ability, of course, everyone knows these are excellent. The, uh, there's no one behind me, nope, the brakes. Brakes are great on this, this has Brembros. The, uh, the Ergos is just a excellent all-around package of a motorcycle. Really well thought out, really well put together, really well sorted, right? They've been making these for quite a while now. So that is pro number one. Overall package, really hard to beat. Maybe the BMW S1000R, maybe, can uh, probably can compete with this. But you're talking, you know, it's around the same price too. So that's probably the competition. I've, ha I've had one of those too, but that one was a little older. It was in 2015. But the BMW, I mean. This is a 2019. All right. So pro number two. Oh, we got a little twisty section here that I like is it's good on the street and it's good on the track. So you can take this to track days. A lot of guys do. I haven't, but a lot of guys do. I'm planning on doing track day uh, later this year, hopefully, at the, towards the end of the season. I would love to start doing track days. They aren't cheap, but I'd love to start them. Anyway, this is good on the street and the track. So a lot of guys do both. And uh, I think that if you're the kind of guy that only has one bike, which a lot of people are like that, especially if you're buying something that's expensive, that this can do double duty for you. And yeah, I mean, I wouldn't really want to take it in the track myself just because of the uh, the value of the bike. I would want something cheaper on the track to thrash. That's just me, just in case I blow side or something, or you know, the wear and tear on it. I wouldn't want to take like a ten thousand dollar bike on the track. But hey, if that's all you got, you got your one bike and you know it really well too because you're riding it all the time, hey, more power to you. for those track guys out there or guys that are planning to get into the track riding and uh, pro number three is it is reasonably comfortable so it's obviously not a cruiser your feet aren't forward you're not even mid pegs really right you are you got you got you know your rear sets but you're not as rear set as like a true sport bike or something like that but it's so it's reasonably comfortable on the legs and then the handlebars here this has a riser on it so this is reasonably comfortable for me with the riser and without the riser well we'll talk about that later but as it is now you, you got a, a little bit of a lean but it's not it's not anything too bad yeah, it is hot out here today guys I'll tell you that much so yeah it has it has a reasonable comfort as far as uh, the ergos go better yeah sure it could but then you might sacrifice other things as far as ground clearance goes and things like that uh, I think that the bars are okay how they are with the riser so yep reasonable reasonable comfort for what it is is uh, pro number three so uh, pro number four is of course you have we have to mention the motor again like the motor is just absolutely incredible the feel and the pull of this motor is just uh, 
I don't know how to put it into words. You guys really need to go out and try one if you haven't. Really, any of the the uh, the 10, 50 years. If you can, if you haven't, you really should because, man, like it's just oh man, the torque and, and the feel is just absolutely unbelievable. It's really uh, it's quite hard. Like a lot of things in motorcycling, it's quite hard to describe with uh, adjectives if you haven't ridden one, but it is uh, it's a thing to behold, a thing to feel, and uh, it's, I don't know where else you can really get this experience, maybe like, maybe the MT-09 with its, uh, you know, Yamaha Triple, with the SP3 motor, maybe, um, I haven't, have I ridden an MT-9? No, that's one, one of the bikes I haven't ridden, I've, I had an MT-7, but I haven't ridden the MT-9, the MT-7 was a great motor too, but this, this is just, uh, like, I don't know, it's just, a, it's it's something special. The motor is something special in this. So that, that's pro number four, is uh, the Triumph Triple is really, it's just, like I said before, it's really well sorted. And it's uh, kind of a unique experience of, of all the bikes that I've had. This one I would say is a unique experience. It's kind of like uh, oh, the Ducati I had, the S2R1000, that was also a very unique experience. And I would say, this is unique, but of course in a different way, since, since they're quite very different motors. But you guys got to try one. Yeah, this thing just rips. Absolutely ripping. All right, pro number five. The sound. The sound out of these uh, out of these uh, triples is just amazing. This, oh, this one only has slip-ons on. It's got SG Project exhaust on it. But man, oh man, like with a even with a full system, it, I'm sure it'd be even better. But I don't need more than this. It's plenty loud for me, and it sounds so good. Check it out. That. And then when you roll off, you get that burble too out of them. Mm. It is. It is uh, probably bothering the neighbors is what it's doing around here. There's some right by, but it is great. The sound is incredible. All right, let's get to the cons. So con number one, I alluded to it earlier. You know the pros there, but the peg height for me on here. The pegs could be a little bit lower, maybe a little bit more forward, just a little bit. Uh, even while I was doing this video, I actually <laughs> actually got a bit of a cramp in my left hip. Um, it happened specifically like when I put my legs down and then like put them back on again or something, and I maybe just hit a weird groove. Maybe it's just me. <laughs> it's just my personal ergos. But yeah, it's. I mean, I, it got out when I stretched my legs back out again. But it's it's just one of those things that like the pegs kind of hit me in a weird spot once I go. You know, a distance or something like that, but for a short term, short, short period riding, it's perfectly fine, and I really like how it locks my feet in and my boots in. But otherwise, the pegs could be a little more forward or a little bit lower, but then you'd probably sacrifice, or you could sacrifice a little bit of cornering clearance, which would not be great, especially if you're going to be on the track with this. All right, so con number two is without the bar riser on here, which you can kind of see if you all duck down a little bit and see it there. I think the bars would be too low for me because they're just about right or maybe even slightly aggressive for me uh, with the riser on it. So if I had no riser, I know the bars would be too low for me. And I mean, the solution is uh, obviously just put a riser on it, which this bike has. But if it didn't have it, we're talking about in stock form, I'm pretty sure it would be too low for me. So the con number two is the, the bar height on it here. Oh, little jump. Con number three, at least this is for me specifically, is the dealer support in my area. There's only like one dealer, at least by me here, and um, it's about like an hour away, maybe a little more, uh, probably about an hour. And I mean, that's not bad. I know that people have it a lot worse than me as far as distance to like, uh, you know, more of an exotic brand dealer. But 
it's kind of tough when I've got a service guy right here in town. I talk about him a lot at Midwest Power Sports. And he does an excellent job, Brad over there. And he services all Japanese makes and models. And he's like five, 10 minutes away from, from where I live. So it's tough when you, you've got, a, maybe you could get this package and something that could be serviced locally. You know, then you kind of weigh, you weigh that a little bit. Now, that being said, I guess this is a bonus pro here. I've never had to do anything with this bike as far as I put new tires on it, that's it. This bike has not needed a thing in the, in the year that I've had it. It's just absolutely excellent as far as reliability, at least for me. It's got about 10,000 miles on it now. I didn't put all those miles on myself, but. So, I mean, it's been, I haven't had a problem where I needed to go to the dealership. And also you can reset the uh, service reminder yourself uh, after you do your servicing and such. So you can do that without going to a dealership, which I do appreciate greatly because, you know, some cars and such, you, you can't, you, you guys know, you can't do that on. Big sweeper here. So yeah, dealership support, I guess, for me in my area, something specific to me that could be better, but really it's not a huge deal breaker. And um, I'm sure for a lot of people, especially for metro areas, it's gonna be just a non-issue. But I thought I'd mention it because for you rural guys out there, it could be something that you, you know, you wanna consider, think about you buy it especially if you're aiming at keeping it long term and uh you know doing if you're not going to do your own service i guess is what i'm trying to say take it right up here so i guess uh we will end with who is this bike for and kind of my closing thoughts as i i usually do oh we got a uh see if we get around this guy before people come somebody who wants uh, performance like great excellent performance and this this has got like it's zero to 60 is like uh, right about three seconds 3.2 seconds something like that I, th I believe and maybe even yeah no I think it's just maybe just under three I'd have to look it up again and uh, the quarter mile is like 10.8 seconds now we're talking about in ideal conditions with a good rider with an excellent rider you know and we're not all in ideal conditions and we're not all excellent riders either especially with launching so the performance is pretty significant on this and the comfort is also pretty good it's a, a good all-around bike it's a good bike you only have one bike this would be a good one to have this would be a good option like i was saying earlier street or track so it's for somebody who wants kind of a good all-arounder but you want performance but you don't care about um having the most comfortable thing in the world right it's comfortable enough it's more comfortable than a sport bike but also it's for the person who has a budget who can handle it especially if you're looking at all the um especially if you're looking at this year like you know 19 or newer you start getting the 2020s and newer you're talking you know probably around nine grand you can maybe get them a little bit less you know eight and a half nine if you find a good deal if you've got nine grand or more to spend, there's a lot of options out there. So that's kind of what this video is for. It's hopefully help somebody weigh the options if you don't have a chance to ride one. If you're looking at this and maybe compare it against the BMW S1000R or um, the M209SP, something like that. And, you know, this is the 1050. They make the 1200 now too, but that's even more expensive. So it's for somebody that's looking in the used market here for 19 or newer. You're talking nine grand or more, depending on your market, it might be 10 or more. If you're down south, I'm up north, so bikes are maybe a little bit cheaper up here, depending on the time of year. Especially if you can snag one in the winter time, you can probably save yourself, I don't know, 500 to a thousand dollars. But yeah, if you've got the budget and you want that triple sound in this package, and as this has all the rider aids, if you go 19 or newer. Um, it might be an 18 too, I'm not sure. You'd have to look that up, but yeah, if, if you if you, you want all the rider aids, you want the traction control, you want the ABS, uh, you want all that stuff, right? And uh, Brembo brakes and all those kinds of things that are, then, and you've got the money. This is a great package to have. So, but is it a, Good first bike. No, this is not a good first bike. 
could you do it? Yeah, sure, it's got a lot of rider aids. You could turn the power down probably and things like that. I don't think you should. I think that you should probably start on something that is used and less expensive, like three grand or less, because if you're gonna tip it over, forget to put the kickstand down, uh, do things like that with it. You don't want to do that with a two ten thousand dollar motorcycle if you can help it, because then it's uh, you're gonna have a a uh, large teardrop come down your eye when you're uh, tipping over a ten thousand dollar bike. Which I know about because the gravel, this uh, kickstand, stuck into the gravel on me, and I had this tip over on dirt road. So I do know about that, and I would have much preferred <laughs> that to be a less expensive motorcycle when that happened. Of course. I mean, it wouldn't everybody. But, yeah, so it's not a good not a good first bike. Um, possibly a second bike if you're a disciplined rider. I would probably say third bike, um, just because of the cost of it and the power of this bike. If you're talking 150 horse, which is not, it's, it's, no, no, it's no joke, right? And you have to develop your, you really should have your right hand uh, smoothness over here develops. So you're not like like this you know doing that kind of stuff on the bike all the time where you're like fighting with it it's not a, it's not an extremely snatchy throttle but it, it's it's got it it's got plenty of power it's definitely got it where it counts right all right i think we better we better let you guys go here wrap this one up because i think this video is getting long so get out and ride one of these things if you can if not gonna go out and buy one be assured that it is a it is a top-notch machine it really is it really is a top-notch machine it's really hard to fault this bike and uh once again though i appreciate you guys thank you for uh joining me here on the channel we've been we've been growing the channel's been growing almost every day now so i am super excited to see where this goes and we'll keep making content try to uh, put together better and better videos for you guys as time goes on with higher production value. I've been working on it. And uh, leave me some suggestions for topics below if you'd like some different, I have some different ideas and things you'd like to see. I'm going to be looking for another bike again soon, purchasing. So if you got any bike purchasing ideas, reviews that you'd like to see, I will see if I can accommodate you guys. I'm planning on right now getting a uh, VFR 800, a Honda. They don't make them anymore. But um, that's what I'm planning on getting next. I haven't had one, and I'd like to check it out. It might be good in the channel. I know uh, they have a pretty uh, good following, too, and I would like to experience it for myself. So we'll see if this guy pulls out here. So, yeah, looking at a VFR 800. We'll see what happens. But if you guys got other ideas or requests, let me know. Make sure to hit like, like and subscribe if you guys enjoy this content and want to help support the channel. Continue growing the channel here and uh, getting towards a thousand subscribers which is uh, looks like it's gonna happen sooner than later so that is awesome and I appreciate you guys and all the comments and I've been you got, I've been getting a lot more comments lately and I respond to every comment basically everyone that I can which is I, I take some time each day to write back so I will be talking to you guys in the comments below thanks again we'll see you guys again next time bye everybody